hello students welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now today with this video we are going to start uh, mechanics of materials by rc hibler most of the guys were commenting and asking for this series of videos so this will be our first video from mechanics of material i hope you guys will like this do subscribe engineers academy if you want to have many more videos from mechanics of material by rc hibler this is uh, an example from chapter 1 so this example says that the 500 kg engine is suspended from the crane boom which is shown in figure determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section of the boom at E so we are required to find the internal loadings uh, at the cross section uh, at this point E so again um, the first step is that we need to find the reactions at uh, point A. If we consider this a B uh, part of the crane boom, let's say that this AB is beam AB. So what we need to do to find the reactions, we have to consider, we have to draw the free body diagram. So this will be our free body diagram. And at point A, since this point A, is this beam is supported by a pin support at point a so we will have two support reactions we will have a x reaction and we will have a y reaction let's let's say that this a y is acting in the downward direction so we will have a y reaction here so and at point b this is our point b at point b the the weight of the engine is acting vertically downward so the mass is given 500 kg so 500 times 9.81 so the total weight is 49.05 newton and at point c this um, cd uh, rod is applying the force on this ab uh, beam right so that force of cd link is fcd which is making some angle here with the horizontal so it is making some angle with the with the axis of the beam and if we have some angle theta here then we can resolve this fcd into two components so this component will be the cost component since obviously the angle is made with the horizontal then this component will be the cost component and we will have the sine component acting like this so this is the ultimate uh, free body diagram and point a and e they are at a distance of one meter and this point E and the distance between point E and C is one meter and the distance between point B and C is one meters. So all are at equal distances one meters uh, from each other. So now to find a X and a Y and this FCD is unknown as well. So to find this FCD, a Y and an X we have to apply the equilibrium conditions. So if you want to find this FCD first then we have to apply the sum of the moment about point A since a y and a x they are not going to produce the moment about point a and these are unknowns so if we apply the sum of the moment about point a then that will eliminate these two unknown forces and then we will be able to find fcd since we will be left with only fcd since this weight is given as well so first of all we are going to apply the sum of the moment about point a this must be equals to zero and the counterclockwise moment is considered to be positive so as you guys can see that this component of FCD is passing through that point A. So its moment arm from that point A is zero and this component is not producing the moment about point A. So this component is producing the moment about point A in this direction, in the counterclockwise direction. So we will say FCD sine of theta, it is producing the counterclockwise moment, so this will be positive and this weight is producing the clockwise moment so the clockwise moment is minus so you write minus 4905 and and we are finding the moment so the moment arm of this component from that point a is this distance from a to c so from from a to c the distance is two meters so we have to multiply this with two as well so we'll multiply this with two and this weight is producing the clockwise moment so this is minus you will write minus uh, 4905 and the perpendicular distance of this weight from that point A is the length of the beam which is 3 meters so we will multiply this with 3 and this is equals to 0 
Now we must find this angle theta. We must find this angle theta from these dimensions. So this length is 2 meters. This length is 1.5 meters. We have to find this length. So we can apply the Pythagoras theorem to find the DC member length. So we can say that DC length square is equal to that AD, AD length which is 1.5 plus AC length uh, AC length is 2 and if we take the square root on both sides we will be able to find DC length so this comes out to be 2.5 meters so this means that this is 2.5 so now using this right angle triangle now using this right angle triangle we can find cos of theta and sine of theta so applying cos of theta to the triangle, I can say that cos of theta will be equal to this adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 2. So cos of theta is 2 divided by 2.5. And similarly, we can say that sine of theta will be equal to this opposite side, 1.5 divided by 2.5. So we can say that sine of theta is 1.5 divided by 2.5. Now, as you guys can see that here we have sine of theta, so we will replace the sine of theta with this ratio and we will be able to find FCD. So we can say that FCD sine of theta is 1.5 divided by 2.5 into 2 minus this 4905 into 3 and this is equal to 0. So now from this we can say that if I bring this term to the other side of the equation, it will become positive and the equation will look like this. So we will have, and similarly, we can say that 1.5 divided by 2.5 multiplied by 2, this gives us 1.2. So this is, we can say that this is 1.2. So we can say that this is 1.2 FCD. So 1.2 FCD. And, and if we divide both sides by 1.2, then we will get FCD. So this is 1.2. So FCD is 4905 multiplied by 3 divided by 1.2. So this gives us FCD equals to 12,262. So FCD, the CD member is applying 12,262.5 Newton force or we can say that this is 12.26 kilonewton. So FCD, we have determined this FCD now. So now the next task is to find the, the AX and AY reactions. So if we apply the sum of the forces in the X, that must be equals to 0 and towards the right is our positive X direction. Then AX is acting in the positive X direction, towards the right is positive, so we will write plus AX. And the, the cost component of FCD is acting in the negative X. So we will write that this is FCD cos of theta and this is equal to 0. And we can say that AX is equal to FCD cos of theta. And we know FCD magnitude which is 12,262.5 and we know cos of theta from here. So cos of theta is 2 divided by 2.5. So now we will multiply our answer with uh, 2 divided by 2.5. So this gives us 9810. So 9810 is AX. So we can say that AX is equal to 9810 Newton, or we can say this is 9.81 kilonewton. So this is now AX. Similarly, then to find AY, we have to apply the sum of the forces in the Y. That must be equal to zero, and in the upward direction is considered to be positive. Now you guys can see that. Uh, this AY is acting in the downward direction, so this is minus AY, let's say. And the sine component of FCD is acting in the positive Y direction, so we will write plus FCD sine of theta. And the weight of the engine is acting in the downward direction, so minus, right? So minus um, 4905, right? So 4905, this is equal to 0. Now we can say that. If I bring this AY to the other side of equation, so it will be equal to this, FCD plus this. So we can say that AY is equal to 
f c d sine of theta minus 4905 and we can put the values so a y is equal to now we know f c d again so f c d is 12262.5 sine of theta from here is this 1.5 divided by 2.5 minus 4905 so we can say that a y is 12,262.5 multiply by 1.5 divided by 2.5 minus 4905. So this gives us 2452. So Ay is equal to 2452.5. 2452.5 Newton or we can say 2.45 kilonewton so this is a y so now we have determined a x n and y and then to find the internal loadings at e we have to cut this a b right and we have to expose the cross section so in order to expose the cross section we have to put a cutting section an imaginary cutting section and then we will consider this a e part of this a b uh, boom right so so we will have the free body diagram looking like this from a to e and since at a we have a x reaction which is 98 10 newton we will have a y reaction 2452 and there is no other force acting external force acting from a to e so we will have the internal loadings so let's assume that we have the normal resultant force and e we have the shear force v e and let's assume that we have the counterclockwise moment internal bending moment at e so we have to find these three internal resultant loadings and the distance from a to e is or we can say that the length of this portion of the beam is one meters this is given right that that is one meters now again we are going to apply to find this and e v e and bending moment we have to apply the equilibrium conditions for that i am going to apply the sum of the forces in the x so internal loadings uh, or we can say a internal yeah internal resultant loadings right so this is internal loadings and the sum of the forces in the x will be equal to zero and towards the right is our positive direction so now a x is acting in the positive x so we will say plus a x and n e the normal resultant force is acting in the negative x so minus n e this is equal to zero or we can say that n e is equal to a x and a x is 98 10 newton or this is equal to 9.81 kilonewton similarly the sum of the forces in the y that must be equals to zero and in the upward direction is our positive y direction so now as you guys can see v e is acting in the positive direction in the upward direction is positive so plus v e a y is acting in the downward direction so which is uh, 2452 and this must be equals to zero and we can say that v e the shear force the resultant shear force at the cross section at e is equal to 2452 newton or this is equal to 2.45 kilonewton and similarly if we apply the sum of the moment about point a that must be equals to zero and the counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive so now as you guys can see that m e is counterclockwise moment so we will say plus m e and then this this a x and a y they are not going to produce the moment about point a and this v e is producing the counterclockwise moment about a as well so we will say plus v e multiply by the perpendicular distance which is the length of this uh, portion of the beam so multiply by one this is equal to zero so we can say that m e is equal to minus v e and minus v e is again 2452 and now this time this will be newton meter since this is the moment right the units of this is in newton and this is multiplied by meter one meter so newton meter or we can say that this is equal to minus 2.45 uh, 
kilonewton meter. So now this is the internal loading along the axis of the beam at E. This is the shear uh, internal loading, shear force at the cross section at E and this is the bending moment and the negative sign tells us that the bending moment is actually in the downward direction. Uh, sorry, that is in the clockwise direction. So this means that the upper part of the cross section is a is in tension and the lower part is in compression. So this is 2.45 kilonewton meter. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope um, this example will help you in finding the internal loadings uh, for such a situation and we will be solving much more problems from chapter 11. So in order to get the in-depth knowledge of finding the internal loadings. So do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution and discussion of such more problems and do like uh, this video if this helps in your learning.